goal, Rabotai Yekarim, with every one of these shiurim is to try a little bit, a little bit, every week, to try to sanctify ourselves, make ourselves holy, make ourselves Anashim Kedoshim. Each shiur, we're supposed to walk out of a little bit holier than we were before we came into the shiur. That's the goal. Now, part of the job is attending. Another part of the job is listening. You know, because if you fall asleep, the whole shiur doesn't usually work by itself. I could just give you the shiur, you actually have to listen. The other part of the job, which is the biggest one, is to do what it says. Take something, let's say we spoke for two hours, three hours, you're probably not going to remember the whole thing. But you're going to remember one, two, three, four, five minutes. Take those five minutes, apply them to your life. That's what makes you holier than how you started. But if you come to the shoe the way you are, and you leave the shoe the way you came, I failed you. You failed you. There's no point. There's no point. The reality is, Rabotais, our job is to sanctify ourselves, make ourselves holy. It's not an easy job, but I'll give you guys a little bit of an example, a little bit of an example of how a person makes themselves holy with something small and how Kadosh Baruch Hu pays cash. There's a uh, special Rav, he, most of his lectures he gives in Yiddish. Tamit Chacham Tzadik. His name is Rav Biderman. And uh, he has some unbelievable stories. And Rav Ephraim told me this one, that he heard from him, true story. There's a guy that he knows, businessman, very successful one, he lives in America. But not only, I'm not talking about just successful with money, that's a given, very successful, but also successful with Kedusha. Successful with his Abu Dat Hashem. How do we know from this story? One day, this businessman, he's at work, he's at his company, they're doing what they're doing, and his assistant calls him. Hi, sir. Yes, uh, did you, uh, were you sure about this wire transfer of $70,000 that you emailed me about? Because this executive assistant, she's the one, she takes care of all of the stuff, including making payments to different companies, buying stuff, selling stuff, big transactions. Transactions could be millions. And uh, she asked him, are you sure about this $70,000 wire to this bank? And he says, what, what wire? What are you talking about? I didn't send you anything. She says, no, sir, sir uh, I have an email from you says seventy thousand dollars to wire such bank he runs to our desk show me the email sees the email i didn't write this email they asked the tech guy investigate the issue what do they find out there's a couple of hackers that have been tracking him for the last week and a half tracking every one of his steps into his system and discovered that he has a pattern. He, anytime he wants to send money to anyone, does transactions, he sends an email to his uh, assistant and she sends the money automatically. And they've been following him, following him, following him, you know, like uh, mirroring his computer, not doing anything, just watching, collecting information, and they decide to take the first shot. Made an e a fake email from him, Send it to the assistant, send $70,000 to this bank, which is their bank. Immediately, they shut off the systems. Obviously, they didn't uh, do this wire. They changed the passwords, everything. But after everything, you know, there's a chaos in the office. How could this be? Where? Who? What? When? But after everything calmed down, he says, he asks his assistant, he goes, I don't understand. I send you wire instructions to send people money every day for much larger amounts of money. You never ask me if I'm sure or I'm not sure. 
How come you had, what, what, what caught your attention on this one? This is the only one. They didn't catch him for any money. This is the only one. They almost got 70000 for him. How come? What happened with this one? She says, I've been working for you for four and a half years. And ever since I've worked for you, I knew that you have a policy in this office to never call a woman by her first name. Why? To have a distance. Don't become friendly with your assistant. Don't become friendly with someone that's not your wife. You, you did you never. So when I saw your email, this email, it says, oh, hi, Miri, how are you? Please send $70,000 to this guy. We're doing a deal. So I said, since when do you call me by my name? So it looks fishy to me. So he tells Rav Biedermann, and he says, look for the Rav. Look for the Rav. Look what happened here. Not just sanctifying myself a little bit. Why? By having a little bit of distance between fellow employees. Don't be so comfortable with somebody that's not your wife. Don't be friends with anyone that's not your wife. Yeah, but she's an employee. You, you technically can call her by her first name. But doesn't mean you should. You sanctify yourself just a little bit. He says, I saved myself $70,000. And we just learned to love from it. Imagine how much he's benefiting right now because of this story. Not just the 70,000. 70,000 is nothing. Imagine how much Kiddush Hashem he has made from this story. From all the listeners, from Rabbi Dermain, listeners that will listen to us, Bezat Hashem. Why? To teach us that when a Kadosh Baruch Hu says, make yourself holy because I am holy. Parashat Kedoshim, it wasn't a suggestion. It was telling you this is a commandment and it's a commandment that you will benefit from in ways that you will never imagine making yourself a little holier